Hi, welcome to our Centro Church online service. We're so glad that you could join us today, whether it's the first time you've watched or whether you're re-watching because you enjoyed the message. Hey, if this is your first time joining us today, there's a little QR code that's coming up on your screen right now. If you could scan that one, there's a new to Centro section or link that you can click and you can fill out your information and one of our team will get in touch with you. There's also a number of other links that you can click to explore as well. We know that you'll be so blessed by our message today and you'll see us again at the end of the service. So why don't we check out today's message? By you. We are grateful for you, not just for what you do in your family, but for the unique strengths that you as fathers and as men bring to our church family. So we are so grateful for you today. I know that for some of us here, Father's Day brings up sad and painful memories. My prayer for you is that our Heavenly Father would surround you right now with His peace that he would comfort you and uh, remind you of his love for you. Every person here today is valued and God has something that he wants to speak to you today. I would like to draw your attention to a book. The name of the book's on the screen. It's Rebuilding Your Father Relationship by Dr. James Scheller. He writes in his book, we all experience father hunger, a craving for a father's acceptance, affection, love, and intimacy. There may be reasons why some of us feel a deeper craving for a a father's acceptance, affection, love, and intimacy, but it's actually built into every single one of us since the day before we were even born. There is a father hunger in every single one of us. Dr. James suggests that we search for people and things to satisfy our father hunger. And in his book, he points to how our heavenly father is here to meet those needs and more. 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So today... I am going to highlight how our Heavenly Father is such an incredible Father to us. And we are going to look at how He so greatly impacts our lives. So if you have a phone or a notebook or something you're taking notes on, I want you to write four ways our Heavenly Father radically blesses us. We've got our foundation scripture, Galatians 4, verse 4 to 7. Read along with me. But when the right time came... But when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And because we are his children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, prompting us to call out, Abba, Father. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, you, God has made you his heir. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, that you are our heavenly father. You're not, you are not only someone else's, but you are our heavenly father. I thank you, Lord God, that in this scripture, we can see that you have done everything possible to restore that relationship with us. You are our father. You have made us heirs. And I pray today that over every single person in this room and everyone watching online, that We wouldn't just hear a good word and forget it, but we would be changed. We would be impacted by what you want to say to us today. Give us ears to hear, Lord God, and a heart to respond. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So the first way our Heavenly Father radically blesses us is, firstly, with His gift of sacrificial love. In verse four and five that we just read, it says, but when the right time came, God sent his son. And the reason for this, God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves. Why? So that we could be adopt, so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Every father here knows sacrificial love, right? Sometimes it's a joy and a pleasure, but sometimes it's painful 
and costly. But every time, because of love, you continue to sacrifice. I have a couple of photos of my dad that I'd like to put up on the screen. This is my dad. I love him so much. Over here, he's with my kids on a recent holiday we went on. This is his little dog named Oreo. He's a rescue pup. Um, my dad's a very gentle, kind person. And um, this up here at the top is my dad with his tinny. He wanted a tinny for like years and years and years and years. And he finally got this prize tinny. So he used to take us to Kitchen Dam with a donut. Um, on the back, I don't know what they're called, a ski biscuit, I think they're called now. And um, we used to sometimes go up the Blue River in Mackay and sometimes up the creek. And I remember this one story from my childhood so vividly. This is the thing that I remember my father by. I was in grade four and I'd convinced my parents that I was too sick to go to school. My mum went to work but my dad had a very rare day off work. So you've got to understand that my dad would never get time alone, okay? He had four children, which I was the youngest of, and uh, he worked a, and a wife, and he had a full-time job. Now my dad's job, he would travel all the time. He would go around the state and he would train up crime prevention, unit, uh, crime prevention units along with the police and the government, and he would go from city to city. He had a number of different jobs in social work and also lecturing at the university. And uh, on the weekends, he was also on our creative team. So we all know those who are on the creative team. That's a time-consuming thing. My dad was a busy man, and he had one day off. And on this day off, he scheduled to take out his tinny, okay? He was going out in his tinny, and he was going to enjoy some quiet time on his own. Everyone say, until then. Until then. Until his lovely little adorable eight-year-old child decided to stay home from school, which I'm such a pleasure to have around. And I required a change of plans. So he had to pack everything to take me with him. That day is one of the best memories I've got of my entire childhood. Just me and my dad up the creek, fishing and eating sandwiches. Honestly, it's the best memory I have of my childhood. I remember this day because I caught six Moses perch. They're beautiful yellow fish with, uh, sorry, silver fish with yellow stripes on them. And you've got to understand, I fished a lot when I was a kid and I never caught anything except this one day I was sick and I went fishing with my dad and I caught six fish. My dad had no idea that his sacrifice on that day would create a memory that I would hold in my heart for the rest of my life. I was a recipient of my father's sacrificial love and we too, all of us in this room, are recipients of our Father God's sacrificial love. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He so loved that He had to give this gift to us so that he could restore his relationship with us. Jesus was an eternal and 100% 100 divine being. And then he came as a man. He was born of a woman named Mary. He lived a faultless life. He served his father's will. He did many miracles. He preached the gospel and set people free. Then he gave his life up to be crucified. You know, when he was crucified, they even pushed a crown of thorns into his head so that they could mock him. Then he gave up his life, paying the ultimate price for all man's sin. He was buried in a tomb. He rose again to life. And now he sits victorious at the right hand of God in all honor and all power, and all glory. We now have this gift of eternal life 
Because our Father God said, there is no way that I will be separated from my children. I have to do something about the state they're in. And he sent his most prized possession, his only son, Jesus, as a sacrifice of love. The second way that our Heavenly Father radically blesses us is adoption. Verse 7 of the scripture we read says, Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you his heir. Our Father freed us from the bondage of sin for the sole purpose that he could restore us back to himself. You see, the sin that was in our life and the sin that was in, a, in the world separated us from him. And the only way to restore us and to bring us back was for, Jesus, for him to sacrifice his son Jesus as the perfect sacrifice. I want to share with you a story about a couple who tried to conceive for five years and they were unable to conceive a child. It was a heartbreaking journey. They came to the, deci- to the decision to apply for adoption. And after they handed all the paperwork in, it was a waiting process, but they were so overjoyed when they received the news that they'd been accepted. And soon after, there was a baby boy that was going to be theirs. Once they had brought their adopted newborn son home, Ruby discovered that she was pregnant. What a joy. And she also delivered a baby boy. (laughs) So she now had two baby boys, which is awesome. When the boys were eight and nine years old, one of Ruby's neighbors had come over the house for a cup of tea and they were sitting down chatting. And while they're chatting, this neighbor says to her, which one is yours, Ruby? And if you can imagine what she says, they both are. That was her response. They both are. And the neighbor persisted. She said, no, what I mean is, which one is adopted? And she says, I've forgotten. I've forgotten. See, Ruby did not hesitate to say that because Ruby treated both of her boys as sons. She chose to forget that one was adopted And she gave them both full rights as sons. I love this story because I see it reflected in our relationship with God. We are adopted as God's children. Our heavenly father, he treats us all as sons and daughters. He chooses to forget our sins, to forget our rebellious past. And he he gives us the full rights of sons and daughters, just as it says in this scripture. It is very hard to comprehend how special it is. Think about it. He's just adopted us as his full children, and it says here that he has made us heirs. You know, under Roman law, an adopted child was guaranteed all legal rights to his father's property, even if he was formerly a slave. He was not a second-class son. He was equal to all other sons. And this scripture tells us, as adopted children of God, we share in all that God, in all of God's resources that he has even given Jesus. As God's heirs, we can claim what he has provided for us, our full identity as children of God. That means we've got God's authority. We've got God's power. We have uh, an intimate relationship with him. And so the third point that I want to bring to you today, the third way our Heavenly Father radically blesses us is through the gift of the Holy Spirit. I want to skip reading this part of the foundation scripture because the next verse includes everything that that verse says. This is Romans chapter 8. So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. 
Now we call him Abba Father, for his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. His spirit is a witness within us, constantly reminding us that we belong, that we are his child. The spirit within us reveals to us the Father's love for us, And it's the spirit that actually stirs that father hunger in us, that father craving, that we would cry out, Abba, Father. I could have never, ever have grasped this on my own. It's the spirit within me that leads me to the place of knowing him and knowing his presence. I've got some photos here from 2018 of the conflict islands. So Tim and I, uh, this was pretty awesome. Uh, Tim and I went on a cruise on a P&O cruise boat. And uh, this is where we went to, Papua New Guinea. And uh, down the bottom here, you see a bay. We pulled out, we hopped off the boat and we jumped on a smaller one and went to this ba- bay. And we spent the day there eating and swimming and snorkeling. And over here is one of the islands that we went to, the beautiful children singing and dancing And then up here on the left, this is the highlight of the trip. This was the conflict islands. This was one of the conflict islands that we went to. When we came into this place, we we were the first ones off the boat and then the last ones to hop back on. We spent all day there. We circled the islands three times. It was incredible. The sand was whiter than I'd ever seen before. The ocean was so bright neon blue. It was incredible. We snorkeled for hours on that day. So what would happen was you've got the island and all of the the trees and all of that in the middle. And then you come out and it's surrounded by this white sand. And then as it goes into the ocean, it's about one meter deep for a hundred meters. The whole island is surrounded by this huge amount of coral. It's just one meter deep for a hundred meters. And then I'm not kidding you. It's like Nemo's drop off. It just goes straight down and there's fish, like so many different colors and sizes of fish. They're gorgeous. The coral is just bright and vibrant and moving in the water. And when you're snorkeling, this is what it's like. You want to tell the person who's snorkeling next to you that it's awesome, but you don't want to stop looking. So you just completely ignore every single other person and you just have your face planted in the water for an hour and a half, two hours, time just flies because it is that mesmerizing. You know, the ship and its crew were the vehicle by which we were able to taste and see all of the wonders of Papua New Guinea. If it wasn't for that cruise boat and the crew, there is no way that we would see all that No way that we would be able to experience all that. That cruise boat is the way that we were able to see all of those wonders. And similarly, I believe, this is what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit is the way by which we are able to taste and see the wonders of our Father God and His kingdom. If it's not for the Holy Spirit drawing us into His presence, we wouldn't know what it's like to see the presence of God, to feel the presence of God, to know His love. The Holy Spirit is the one who takes us there. The Holy Spirit is the inner voice reminding us, affirming us that we belong as a child of God and that He is our Father, just as the Scripture says. Just to quickly recap Firstly, the Father has given us the greatest gift of sacrificial love in His Son, Jesus, through which we receive forgiveness and freedom from sin. Secondly, the Father brings about His freedom for the purpose that He can restore His relationship with us, adopting us as His sons and daughters and heirs to the kingdom. Thirdly, He gives us the Holy Spirit who affirms that we are his children and and the Holy Spirit reveals the Father to us. So lastly, my fourth point, the fourth way that our heavenly Father radically blesses us is with identity. Now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. 
This speaks about a new identity given to us at adoption. We've been given a new identity. We need to throw off the old thinking that we are slaves, that we are controlled by this and that, and that our purpose is minimal because all of that is not true anymore. As a child of God, you have been given a new identity. David is the perfect example of a child of God who discovered his identity in God Almighty. You'll know the story found in 1 Samuel chapter 17 of David, the shepherd boy. He loved God so dearly and he was known as a man after God's own heart. Goliath was a nine foot tall battle hero. He was trained and experienced at killing people. And he was up against David, a shepherd boy. For 40 days, morning and evening, this giant Goliath strutted in front of the Israelite army, casting threats on God's people. Saul and the Israelite army were terrified and they hid in fear. None of them would fight. None of them stood up for the name of their God. But, everyone say but. But. Here comes the good bit. But when David heard the filth coming out of Goliath's mouth, he was furious. He said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? David spoke to the king Saul to nominate himself to fight this giant. You know what Saul said to him? You can't fight him. You're just a boy. But Samuel, uh, David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. Wow. (laughs) I have done this to both lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. You know, it seems that God had been training David for a very long time while he was tending those flocks. He was alone in the fields. He was singing praises to God. We know that he wrote so many songs because he loved and worshiped God. God had been training him while he was alone. David was chasing God's heart while God was shaping David's heart. God empowered David to defeat beasts that threatened the flock. And with every victory, David saw God's power. David heard God's voice. David trusted God because the Lord went to battle with him time and time again. He grew courage, he grew strength, and he began to see himself the way that God saw him, with authority, with power, with courage, with strength. The closer he grew to God, the more he discovered his true identity. And just as David goes into battle, David serves Goliath a well-deserved slamming. 1 Samuel 17 verse 45 says this, read along. David replied to the Philistines, you come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head. And then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals. And the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle and he will give you to us. Now it goes on as Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. 
Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from the sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Now you can read on to see all the things that happened after that. But why was David the only one with another, enough courage to defend his God, to do this ridiculously awesome, courageous thing? Why was it only David? Why was it only him? Because David knew something that the other men did not know. And this thing that David knew gave him courage and supernatural power. David knew his identity was found in knowing his father. David knew the father so well that he ended up reflecting him. He took on the father's confidence, audacity, and faith. He took on the, his father's mission, and nothing scared him anymore. David began to sound like, believe like, hope like, and live like a son of God. We too have this same opportunity to know the Father and reflect Him so. We are no longer slaves, but God's own children, reflectors of His almighty love, almighty power, and almighty grace. So I'm just about to show you a video clip of a toddler who has fallen down a pipe. He's needing to be desperately saved. There are many people there, many, many people, after 15 hours who had tried to dig him out. They ended up getting machinery with a big bucket to scoop out to try and get down to this toddler who had fallen down the pipe. In the video, you can see the father wearing an olive T-shirt olive green and he's clearly so distressed because he's separated from his child and he cannot, no matter what he can do, he could not in his strength get to his child. Then there's a teenage boy who's willing, who willingly risks his life. Let's have a look at this video. Awesome. So this clip, it really moves me to see that this child had fallen down a 15 meter pipe and you see the father, how distressed he was that he was separated from his child and that he couldn't save him. I showed you this video today because I think that at times it can depict how we are. Sometimes we are like that child buried 15 meters under the dirt of this world, living hurt or offended or wounded. Some of us may be in bondage to sin or constantly stressed. And whatever that dirt is for you, you may feel buried under 15 meters of it, unable to reach the Father, unable to be with your Father God. 
The point is, is that there are times when we are separated from God by all this stuff. And He is our Father God, desperate to restore us to safety, to restore our relationship, to heal our hearts and restore joy and peace back into our lives. This is the way your Heavenly Father feels about you. Today we are going to pray together. You may have never prayed a a prayer to God before in your life, or maybe you've prayed to Him many times, but this prayer is for all of us together. And if you feel comfortable, I would love you to pray with us. We are gonna pray to our Heavenly Father. If you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. Would like to repeat this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I am sorry for the wrong things I have done that displease you. Please forgive me and wash me clean. I know now that you forgive me. I want to find you and follow you all my days. I want to experience the Father's love. I want to experience the Father's adoption and the Holy Spirit and my God-given identity. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Keep your eyes closed. I'm going to pray with you. Lord, I thank you for every single person in this room. Every single person is important to you. There is not one person that you love more than the other. There is not one thing that one person has done that has made you love them less. Every single person here and watching at home is valued and loved. And you gave this sacrificial to sacrificial love to every single one of us the same. You desire to adopt us as your sons and daughters. You desire to have that intimate relationship with us where sin doesn't separate us anymore, where offence doesn't separate us anymore, where guilt doesn't separate us anymore, where there is not a single thing that will separate us from your love. I thank you, Lord God, that there is freedom in this place for every individual. You forgive and you separate that sin as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. And Lord, I pray that you would restore that love, restore hope, restore joy, and restore peace in every soul this morning, in every heart. I pray those things in Jesus' mighty name. Now God is here in this place. And if that was the first time that you have prayed the prayer, where is Carol and Mick Hen? Are you here today? Give us a wave, Carol. This is Carol Hen. If that's the first time that you have ever prayed that prayer, I want you to see Carol Hen before you leave today because we would love to teach you and to help take you on that journey of knowing Jesus. A song, but the altar is going to be open. Why don't we stand to our feet? We're so glad that you could join us for our Centro Church online service. If you did want to connect with us, don't forget to scan the QR code and fill out your details. Also, if there was something in the message that stood out to you and you'd like to say yes to Jesus, then scan that QR code, click the Say Yes to Jesus link, and one of our pastoral team will get in contact with you this week. We hope and pray that you'll join us at one of our live services next week, either at 5 Pring Street, Ipswich at 9am or 5pm, or at our Collingwood Park location at Woodlink State School at 10am. Blessings from our senior pastors, Pastor Tim and Pastor Catherine Spark, and all of the team here at Centro. Have a blessed day.